Excel has this new function called trim range that would allow you to quickly trim blank rows and columns in your references that would otherwise bloat your formulas. So this is going to be very useful for many of the Excel users. Along with this, Excel also has this new dot operator that would change the way how you write cell references. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything about this new trim range function and the dot operator and show you a lot of examples. I will also talk about when this is not going to work so you know when to use it and when not to use it. And I will also do a speed test to show you why this is better. So let's get started. So here I have these list of names and I want to get this list maybe to use in a formula and I want this to be dynamic. Now one way to do this is obviously to convert this into an Excel table and then I can use the reference of that table. But in many cases it is either not desirable or not possible to use an Excel table. Maybe you're using dynamic formulas in an Excel table that doesn't spill. So maybe you want to keep it as a regular range. Now, in this case, if I want to refer to this, a very common way to do this is going to be just use the reference. And now when I hit enter, it gives me the result that gives me all these names, but this is not dynamic. So if I come here and I add an additional name here, you see that that name doesn't appear in this resulting range. Now, one way obviously is to extend the range. So for example, in this case, it's referring to A2 to A10, but I can refer it to A2 to A100. Now this makes it dynamic in such a way that if I add a new name, it does appear in the list, but it also shows me these additional zeros that I do not want. And this is where the new function that I'm going to talk about, which is the trim range function comes into play. So with the trim range function, I can just put that around my reference and now when I hit enter, you can see that it gives me the result, but it doesn't give me any of those zeros or any blank cells are not being referred to by this range. So what the trim range function does is it is going to go through your range, then it is going to find the last filled cell and then and the last and the first filled cell, and then it is going to remove all the blank rows around this edge. It could be above the, uh, the range, it could be below the range, it could be on the left or to the right. Now, the trim range function takes this reference, but it also allows you the flexibility to choose whether you want to remove leading rows or uh, trailing rows or both and same with columns. So in this case, if you use the second argument, it will ask you whether you want to do nothing. So just keep the range as is, which is to just show everything without cutting any blank rows and columns. You can choose to remove the leading blank rows or trailing blank rows or both. By default, three is the default option here. So if I do not use anything, it removes all the leading and trailing blank rows and columns. And if you want, you get the flex flexibility for columns as well. So you can specify whether you want to remove leading, trailing or both. Now, one good thing here is that you can also use the trim range function without actually using the function name. And that is by using the dot operator. So let me show you, let's actually remove this. And let's say I refer to this entire range, which is column A and column B. Now, if I hit enter, you'll see it gives me this range, but it also gives me these additional zeros after the name and on to the right, because there is nothing here in the second column. Now, Instead of using trim range, what I can do is I can use this dot operator. Now this dot operator is going to be used before and after the colon. So after the colon, if I put a dot operator, it is going to remove all the trailing rows and columns that are blank. And if I put it before it, it is going to remove all the leading blank rows and columns. So in this case, because I do not have any uh, leading blank rows and columns, if I just put a dot here and hit enter, you can see that in my data, it only gives me the names, all the blank rows are gone and the blank column is gone because it had nothing. So instead of using trim range, you can use this dot operator. And similarly, if you want, you can use this dot operator here as well. So it is going to remove trailing and and leading blank rows and columns. Now, while this is quite useful, the real power of this function comes in when you use it with other functions. So let me show you a couple of examples. So let me start with a very simple example. Here I have these names and I have these sales values and I want to calculate the commission. Now I can do this. I can select this entire range 
and then multiply this by 5% and it is going to give me the result. But the problem is that if I add more names here, for example, if I add my name and let's say this is the sale value, it doesn't work. I would have to come here and change the reference. So what I can do in this case is I can refer to a longer range. So instead of B2 to B10, maybe I can go do B2 to B100 or maybe even 1000 depending on your data and then come here and after the colon put a dot. When I do that, it is going to remove all the trailing blank columns, sorry, blank rows and columns. And now when I hit enter, you can see it gives me the right result. So here I have this data for these names and scores and let's say I want to get this data which is only the names and the score but not the header. Now one way obviously to do this is I can select this range and then if I want this to be dynamic I can extend this so I can make it be 100 and then when I hit enter it gives me this but because I do not want these zeros I would add a dot after the colon so it removes all the lead sorry the trailing blank rows and columns so it gives me this result here. But to make it even easier, what I can do is I can remove this 2 and this 100 from here. So now it is actually just referencing the column alphabets. And now when I hit enter, it does the work, but it gives me this first row, which I do not want. So what you can do is you can pair it with the drop function. And in the drop function, I can say I want the result, but drop the first row. And when, I, when it drops the first row, I still get my result. Now, the benefit of doing this is, first of all, my reference is a lot easier. I'm not tied down with the number such as 100 or 1000. I can refer to the entire column. And then by dropping, I can remove a couple of additional rows that are at the top or at the bottom from this data. Similarly, let's say I have this data and I do not want this entire data. I just want to know what's the last record. Now, to get the last record, again, I can do the same thing. I would refer to this entire range and then I would use a dot after the colon so that it removes all the trailing blank rows and columns. But in this case, I do not want the entire data. I just want the last row. So I would use the take function. And here, if I use take as one, it is going to give me the first row. But if I use minus one, it is going to give me the last row. That is the filled last row. So now when I hit enter, you can see it gives me this result. Now, one very important thing to know is that trim range function or using the dot operator is actually looking for blank cells. It is not looking for cells that look blank but are actually blank. For example, if I come here and I put a space character, then my last filled cell actually becomes this one. So if I put this number here, you'll see that this becomes my last filled cell because it has a space character. So it has to be actually blank to be removed by the trim range function or by using the dot operator. Now here is an example where I find the dot operator quite useful. So here I have these, these items and I want to create a drop down list here in this cell and I want this list to be dynamic so that if I add more items to this list here, these would appear in the drop down list. So to do that, let's first create the drop down list. So I would come to this cell, then go to the data tab and here click on the data validation icon. And in the data validation dialog box within the settings tab, I would choose list and then I would choose these items here. Now, if I just choose till A7, it is not going to include any new item that I add. So let me choose till A10. And now when I click OK, you can see I have these items, but I have this green strip which indicates that there are blank cells that are used to create this drop down list. Now this is dynamic if I come here and I let's say choose something like fishing and I then show you it has fishing here but it has this blank gray cell kind of a thing which indicates that there are blank cells that have been used to create this and i do not want it so what i can do is go back to my data validation dialog box and after the colon here i am going to just put a dot and now when I do this, it is going to only include this to create the drop down list. But if I add more items, those would automatically be included. For example, in this case, you can see that gray, that gray strip is gone. If I remove anything from here, it is going to be automatically removed. And if I add anything, I, I add anything here, it is going to be added. So this is again a practical, useful use case of using the dot operator within data validation. Another example where this could be useful is when you're transposing the data, but you want this to be dynamic. For example, I have this data and I want to transpose it, but when I add more rows of data, I want that to be transposed as well. And maybe I'm doing it in the same sheet or maybe in a different sheet. So in this case, what I can do is use the transpose function, sorry, not translate, transpose function, and I can select this range. 
And now when I do that, it gives me the result where this is the transposed data. But if I add more rows, those won't be added. So I want to make it dynamic. So what I would do is remove these numbers. I would just use A to C. And then after the colon, I'm going to put a dot and see what happens. I still get the same result, but now this is dynamic. If I add anything here, let me add my name. Let me add any sale value. And you can see if I go to the right, it has added my name, which means that now this transpose result has become dynamic while still making sure that it is not giving me zeros and additional blank cells and columns and rows uh, because I have used the dot operator. Here is another useful use case of using the dot operator. So here I have these three tables and I want to combine these tables and get the result here in another sheet. Now, if this is something that you're using quite often, a better way to do this would be to convert these into an Excel table and then use Power Query to combine all of these tables. But if you cannot use Power Query for some reason, or if you want to do this with a formula once in a while, then you can use this dot operator trick. So here I am going to combine them and to do that, I'm going to use the vStack function. Now vStack function is going to combine these and then stack them vertically. So here, instead of just selecting this, because I want this to be dynamic in such a way that if I add more data, that should automatically come there in the result. I'm going to just select the entire column. So this column, then this range, and then this range. Now, if I hit enter, I'm going to get an error because I'm starting from the second row onwards and there is not enough space for it to combine and give me all the result of all the tables. So uh, what I'm going to do is I would come here and I would change this formula by adding the dot operator after the colon. So what it's going to do is it is going to check the entire range and then remove all the blank rows that are after the range. So in this case, let's put a dot here and a dot here. And now when I hit enter, you can see it gives me the result, but this is not right. I have these headers as well, which I do not want, but this, ha this has a very simple fix. What I would do is come and within vStack function in every range, I would just use the drop function and then add one so that it is going to drop the first header from all these ranges. So again, drop then comma one then drop comma one and you can see that it has given me the result all these headers are gone and the date can be formatted in whatever way you want but the result is here now it is dynamic so if i come here and i let's say change something for example i come here and i make this delhi you will see that this is now added in the result here. I have it here. So this is dynamic. If you make any changes to these tables, it would automatically be here in this combined data set. So a few days ago, I created this video about XLOOKUP and a lot of people commented on one of the sections saying that I could have used the dot operator while I could not have because it wouldn't work. So in this section, I'm going to quickly explain when you can use a dot operator and when you need to use the trim range function because the dot operator is not going to work. So the first thing and a very simple rule is if you're using a reference that looks like a cell reference, then the dot operator is going to work. But if the reference is created using a formula, then it is not going to work. Let me show you. So in this case, let's say I want to refer to this range. Now, if I come here and I use a reference like this, where I have a colon, I have a cell reference like A2 and B14, I can use the dot operator. But if I use something which doesn't look like a reference, but still creates a reference, I cannot. For example, if I use the indirect function, where let's say I'm referring to A2 to B100, and let me put this in double quotes, it gives me the result, so it is working. But in this case, if I try and add the dot operator, it is not going to work because this is not a reference. This is a formula that returns a reference. So in this case, you'll see that it doesn't work. Similarly, I showed in one of my videos how you can actually use XLOOKUP to create a reference. So for example, let's say I want to get the score for Sophia. So in this case, let's use XLOOKUP where my lookup values, let's say Sophia, then my lookup array is this and my return array is this. Now, if I hit enter, you see 95 here, but what is happening is XLOOKUP is actually returning the reference of this cell, which is B5. And let me show you, if I come here, I 
create a colon and then I use B100, you'll see that it gives me the result which starts from here and it gives me the result which is B100. So this is actually a reference is being created here. Again, in this case, because this part is not a reference, it does return a reference, but it is not a reference, you cannot use a dot operator. A lot of people told me that I could use a dot here and it would work, but it doesn't work. However, you can use the trim range function over it. So if I come here and I use trim range, you'll see that it is going to work. So let me close the bracket and you can see it has worked. It started from 95 and it gave me the result till 45. If you want to learn more about this technique and how it worked, I will link to my XLOOKUP video that I created in the description so you can watch it from there. Now, let me show you the speed test of whether this function is actually faster. Does it make your system slow or not? Let's quickly do a speed test. When Microsoft released this function, they mentioned that this is going to be more efficient and the performance is going to be better because you can refer to ranges, but it does not actually go through the entire range. It only goes through the cells that are filled, but I wanted to quickly do a speed check. So here I have these uh, cells that are filled and I have about 5,000 cells that are filled, 5,000 rows, and then there are all blank ones. And let's quickly do a test. So I'm going to use the len function where when I select this entire range, and now when I hit enter, see what happens. It takes a few seconds before giving me the result. But if I come here and I do the same thing with this range and I add a dot operator, let's see what happens. You can see it gives me the result instantly and you can see the difference. If I come here, I refresh this, it takes a couple of seconds. It's still doing it, yeah, now it's done. And I come here and I hit enter and it's instantly done. So the reason is because now it has millions of cells that it does not have to process because those are blank. So first, before it uses the len function, it first ranges this, it changes the size of the range so that it only includes the cells that are filled and then applies the function to it. But in this case, it is going to apply this function on all the cells, no matter whether they are blank or not. So this is a lot more efficient. The performance is a lot better. And to be honest, this is something that should be there by default instead of me specifying the dot it should be there by default whenever I'm using ranges but it is not there because of the compatibility reason so I, I don't think that is going to be there but the dot operator definitely is quite useful and if you're working with the ranges that can expand and you want your result to be dynamic you should definitely be using this. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.